So, is there evidence for evolution or isn't there? Let me show you. I'll begin with fossils. There are now literally millions of fossils in museums all over the world. They've been dated and documented and the relationships between them analysed. When mapped out through time, the anatomical connections can only be explained by evolution. All life is related in a vast family tree. Fossils also show how life forms change over time along individual branches of the tree. Look at these skulls. The so-called missing links show the growth of our ancestors' brains over the last three million years as we evolve from something like a chimp on hind legs to modern humans. But there's even more convincing evidence. There is a code of four chemicals in every cell of every living thing, DNA. Today, machines like these can analyze and compare DNA with absolute precision. So Darwin's theory can be tested. Is it true? Yes. The results match the fossils. DNA links all life through the code, and the more closely related two species are physically, the more similar their code. This is just part of the mountain of evidence that supports evolution. What creationists like Nick Cowan claim is God's perfect creation is in fact the result of evolution's arms race. Animals have evolved extraordinary adaptations to fit their environment, but they're not perfect. Designers can go back to the drawing board. Evolution is condemned to modify what's already there. So nature is full of compromises and imperfections. Creationists also ask how something so apparently perfect as the eye just sprang into existence. Well, it didn't. The basic chemistry that makes up a light-sensitive cell is shared right across the animal kingdom and natural selection has seized on this time and time again. Science has uncovered species at every stage in the evolution of the eye. It is a cumulative process, and each step of the way is more useful than the one before. The eye has evolved independently at least 40 different times around the animal kingdom, and it has evolved gradually, improvement on improvement. And yet... No sensible person would have ever left the body the way it is. Like what? What's a good example of that? Um, the most dramatic is, is the human eye. Right. You know, it's held up as this example of perfection in the body. It's not perfect to guys. It's a perfect example of, of why the body is not designed. Cover one, if you would, please. And we take the pin and we move it right in the... And you have to keep looking right, right. at the bridge of my nose, so okay. keep your eye fixed. And now we're going to move it just out a little bit, about 15 degrees. And right about there... Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. You can't see it? No. Now can you see it? Yes. Now can you see it? Yes. Now can you see it? No. There's a blind spot. Yeah. That's really lousy. Our bodies are so fabulous in some respects. Our heart keeps beating and never takes a five-minute vacation for decade after decade after decade. That's astounding. But we have an appendix. We have wisdom teeth. Birth is difficult. Uh, many people get nearsightedness. And the combination of some things being so perfect and other things being such botched jobs is what should make us all sit up and take notice that this is something that's been shaped by natural selection that has a lot of vulnerabilities built in that can be explained only by how natural selection works. So our botched compromised bodies are themselves evidence of evolution. They're shot through with history. Evolution is a fact. It's documented by science to the same degree Napoleon is by history. 